Gentlemen, start your engines. Welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. It's something we started, I don't know, I think it was four years ago. Me and Amanda, who everybody's going to see a little later, she made the trek to yep. New Hampshire. Sorry, this morning. Move to Maine, hang out with us. We're going to put it right between us. Now, that ain't going to look like an Oreo, huh? <laughs> but, uh, you know, bringing you this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports right from the 250. And it don't matter what they run here, it's the 250. And, you know, when you walk through the gate this weekend, it just, you, it electrifies you, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, the, the excitement level of the cruise is, you know, you walk down through, I mean, I walked down through, talked a bunch of them, which we're going to talk about a little bit, but, you know, some of them, you walk right up and have, hey, 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 how you doing? And some of them, they're focused, they're, they're right, well, head down, digging. You know, and one thing that happens with this race, everybody comes in with the, you know, with the ultimate goal of being in the show and then see what happens. But every year there's those one or two guys that the added pressure from the media gets put on them right. because they've had that stellar first half a season here at Oxford or on the ACT tour, and more times than not... Or they had that stellar performance in the Oxford 250 last year. More times than not, they get the Sports Illustrated jinx, and they don't have a very good day. Right. You know, Ricky Rolfe a few years ago, Tommy Ricker, you know? I remember a couple years ago, every article that was written, every newspaper, everything was about Nick Brown and Ben Ashline. Right. I think Ben needed a provisional to get in and Nick was going home, right. you know? So, you know, those guys, and I talked to Tommy Ricky's team yesterday, they didn't want to be on the radar. They wanted to be just, you know, hey. Let it happen, right. You know, and hopefully uh, at the end of the day, they got a big smile on their face, you know? Because you want to be that Larry Gelinas, Roger Brown, Jeremy Wolf, Tommy Rossetti. Right. You don't want to be... And you just named two guys that are here today. I mean, we don't... There isn't a lot of guys that have won the Oxford 250 who are racing today. I mean, you got Ben Rowe, Roger Brown, Larry Gelinas, and uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Eddie. Eddie McDonald. You know? I and mean, uh, those, those are the only four guys that are, that are competing today. At this point, they haven't qualified. We don't even know if they're going to make the show. And then you talk about guys... Jeff Taylor comes to mind. He's here. Should have already won this race. Yeah. Tracy Gordon, earlier than that, Robbie Crouch, Kelly Moore, Dale Shaw. Right. I mean, these guys have been close and never, you know, and you talk to those guys and you say, well, you know, does your, is there a missing part or a void in your career because you don't have it? No, no, I've had a great career. You know what? You don't have a 250 win. Everyone wants it. And Jeff Taylor's a guy that a lot of people are talking about today. You know, I think some of those guys... And, you know, them and their team, they feel like there's a, there's a myth. They won't admit it, but they, they probably feel like there's a missing part that they couldn't nail down at Oxford 250. Um, does it define their career? I don't think it defines their career. I mean, it would be an added bonus in their career. I mean, e even if Dale Shaw had never won a, a Bush North championship, he still had a great career in, in the Bush North. And he can never say that it doesn't matter because he's touting himself as the car builder of the last three 250 winners. Right. So it matters to these guys. It matters to the car builders. It matters to everybody. But I want to tell you, you know, you look around the pits, you got the big haulers. That's not the deal here. That's right. not the big teams, the money teams. What this race is truly all about is the little guy. The guys like Ricky Moss. Right. And his team has worked around the clock for two days I, to get him here. Right. So if they can be fortunate enough to roll out onto the starting grid, they've already won the 250 right. in their minds. Right. Granted, they aren't taking the check on the trophy home until they do do it, but in their minds, they're already a winner. Right. I mean, and, and you, you mentioned Ricky Morse. I think around the corner from us, I, th I believe it's Ryan Green from uh, who races down to Lee. Oh, it's Joey, it's Joey Doyon, the 83. Yeah. Joey Doyon, one of the Boss Hog guys, you yep. know. Looks like he just got the, cut got, the body off. Yeah, of, three different colored body panels. You know, so if he can get in the show, yeah, he's, guys like that. If they, if they get a good draw, and get in the show. And l let me tell you something. I went up and watched second practice, and 
usually there's like 10% of the field that are standouts. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, you get that. I, I don't want to say 10%. I mean, you, it's usually like an 80-20 ratio. Usually 80% of the guys are in this box. Then you got 20% of the guys that are, that are real fast. Yeah. Well, second practice, I, I was timing a lot of guys. And some guys were on new tires. You know, I took that into consideration. And, and there's a lot of parity this year as far as, I, I would say that it's more closely closer to like a 90-10 ratio. There's there's the few there's a few guys that are that are that are right there you know real fast, but they they drop off when they, they get some laps on their tires. But there's a lot of guys right in that box that luck of the draw, you know. And one of those fast guys they draw the back of the heat where they're going, you know. Yep. It's, no, it's exactly. a matter of getting through the guys. No, so. exactly. So I think you guys are all going to enjoy. What we're going to bring for you today. It's going to be a great show right here from Oxford, and it's one of those things. If you've never experienced just the whole atmosphere, the camping, everything that goes along with this race, and it, every year it continues to grow and grow and grow. It's the 39th year, and six hours from now, we'll know what the starting grid is. Well, less than that, but they'll be racing on the green, and probably eight hours from now, we'll know who the 39th winner. And they'll be will sitting be, right here. Will it be a repeat winner? Will Eddie join Mike? Dave and Ralph. With three you know, time winners, right? Will Ben Ashline be that kid? Austin Terrio, will he like take the lead, so to speak, in the main young gun competition? Listen, I, I one of the teams that I went and talked to was uh, the AT team with Mickey Green leading. And I went up and, and I had a little nice little conversation with Mickey Green, a little show up but sweet. Mickey Green was focused and I could t I didn't want to bug him. I could tell where he, he was. He, he was in his own, and I, we'll see how it plays out. It's going to be a good one, so I hope everybody enjoys this week's episode and what we're bringing you right here from Oxford because uh, it's the place to be today. Where's the best place to get a new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram? Southern Maine Motors. Hi, my name is Danielle, customer care service specialist at Southern Maine Motors. We are a local family-owned business. Our separation point in this busy market is our commitment to you. Satisfaction is not enough. Our goal is for you to become a store promoter because your kind words are stronger than over 100 TV commercials. This Jeep Patriot Sport is only $13,225 or this Jeep Compass Sport for only $17,567. No other dealer is working as hard to be number one as Southern Maine Motors. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Award champs, rewarding your champions. The official supplier of Mainly Motorsports. A lot of, a lot of young kids grow up around the state of Maine dreaming of this race. Yep. Met a guy earlier in the season, been filling in for Jake Doerr over there at Beatridge on Thursday Thunder, Mike Ordway Jr. Yep. Real nice kid, you know, 23 years old, just... Having fun down there at Thursday Thunder and, running the legend car. And he's a young kid who, who's probably had those same dreams that we're seeing, but he grew up in New Hampshire. So I went down and caught him last weekend at the uh, over at Lee with the Money Bags 100 lap race for the 350 Supers, who a guy that is here today picked up the win, and that's Wayne Hallowell Jr. Yeah. So he could have a big cash weekend. Right. So uh, we want to talk to Mike about some of the things that he's accomplished at such a young age being from the open wheel ranks and asked him about the 250 because everybody if you're in New England and you don't know about the 250 you don't know jack about racing right so enjoy what Mike Ordway has to say about him his young career and uh, some of the people around him right 
caught up with uh, Mike Ordway Jr. down here at the Moneybags 100 down here at Lee USA Speedway. And a lot of people up in Maine, unless they've been going to Beechridge on Thursday Thunder, might not recognize the junior after it. They'll recognize the name Mike Ordway. But uh, first off, I want to welcome you to Mainly Motorsports, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, this is a pretty neat deal. I mean, we all grew up and, and watching the uh, the ISMA Super Modifieds, you know, the big block Supers. And, uh, you know, down here in New Hampshire, they introduced the 350 Supers a few years back. And, you know, they're still continuing to grow, but you got a pretty big deal going on here tonight at Lee. Yeah, they, uh, you know, Russ Conway and David Story and a couple of the other guys, you know, they got some sponsors together and uh, decided to have a big race. And, I, you know, I think it's good. I mean, uh, you know, I, I started racing in a small block super here um, in 2004, and you know, and we went and run uh, some USAC midget stuff and uh, some NEMA midget stuff and ISMA super stuff, and uh, you know, just funding got tight, and we ended up having to come back. And uh, you know, the divisions seems to be getting better every week and every year, and you know, hopefully it'll stay stay good. Now you're you're a young guy, so to speak, 23. But in NASCAR standards, you're old. You know, you you, you had those chances. You, you know, we talked about it the other night that uh, some opportunities that were presented to you, and uh, but the money just wasn't there to, for you to be able to take that step. But you're still beating and banging around the local short tracks and, and making a name for yourself. Yeah, we're trying. You know, we uh, we had a couple opportunities there a few years back. We run really well in uh, some ISMA Super stuff and finished second in points. And and we had a couple offers from down south. We just couldn't come up with any money. And uh, we actually had one indie car deal that was you know starting to go together, and it just didn't work out. And uh, same deal. We just couldn't find any funding. And and I mean. I have no problem just being a local guy. Um, I mean, I've seen guys, you know, my father and Chris Purley and Russ Wood and, you know, even Wayne Hallowell and his old man and Ben and Mike Rowe and Johnny and all them guys. They're just the local heroes. And I mean, I wouldn't have any trouble doing that. We all grew up as race fans with these local heroes. And uh, I mentioned Thursday Thunder earlier. You, you filled in for Jake Doar, who's, you know, work commitment, but he's coming back. So uh, what did you think of that? I mean, you, you, I know we talked the first night, you know, they looked at you being a rookie, made sure you had the rookie stripe and uh, didn't realize really how much you would uh, done in your racing career at such a young age. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a neat deal. I mean, I got to thank the Doors for letting me do it. Um, and I mean, it was just a lot of fun. You know, there was no pressure. We weren't running for points. We were just going up there. Um, you know, we would have liked to win some races. We ended up top five in a few of them. Um, but I mean, the overall experience was pretty neat. Um, the cars, you know, the cars are good. And I mean, there's a lot of young talent out there that, you know, potentially in another three or four or five years, you know, those are the guys you're going to be seeing at your local short tracks. Yeah, you're right. Now, speaking of local short tracks, we're here at Oxford, uh, you know, this past weekend and this week's show, and uh, every kid in Maine grew up wanting to be in that starting field and dreamed of winning that Oxford 250. Was that something you ever thought of, being from New Hampshire in the open wheel ranks? Yeah, I had thought about it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan as I am a driver, and I mean, you know, it was always, for me, it was always the Oswego Classic with the Supers, or, you know, the little 500 with the Sprint cars, or, you know, just open wheel stuff. Um, but I mean, I, I run a late model a few times, um, you know, a few years back, and I've run some modified stuff, and, and the 250, I mean, it, it would be something, you know, if something come up, um, I mean, I'd definitely like to try it. Um, you know, that's another deal. There's been some great names, you know, just local guys that won the 250, you know, and there's been some cup guys that come in and run it and they win it. And it just, it, it's a great mix of drivers. And I mean, it, it gives, you know, the little guys a chance to, you know, race against the big guys and show what they can do. Yeah, and it's just like if you could pull this win off tonight, what it would do for your budget for the second half of the year. But uh, it also, obviously, you got some people behind the scenes that really help you out. You can't do it all yourselves. Yeah, you know, my dad and uh, Eddie Page, they've been together forever. I mean, they've won hundreds of ISMA races together and, you know, super modified races. And, uh, They've helped me out a bunch every night in the shop, and you know I got a couple buddies that come over, and uh, Larry Jefferson, he's another guy that's been with my father, and um, my uncle owns uh, Fred LeClaire and Sons Log, and they you know sponsor us, and uh, Harrington Paving, Bob Harrington, he sponsored me forever when I run the Isma deal and the USAC deal, and uh, just a bunch of people always help out, and it seems to work. All right, Mike. Well, good luck here tonight, and good luck the rest of the year, and uh, for you fans at Maine that got a chance to watch him run Thursday Thunder. Just follow along with Mike Ordway, and uh, he's got some connections in Maine that you'll probably find more out about down the road. Thank you. Thank you. Well, obviously we mentioned Beatridge with Mike, but uh, you were down there last night, so you missed the, 
the Saturday night festivities over here. And yeah, and what, one, of, one of the things that people don't know about Mike Ordway is he actually spots for Brad Babb at Beechridge on Saturday Yeah, so he has ties to Beechridge. Right. And, uh, how about young Bobby? Now we got six out of the ten young guns. Bobby Granted, Tim he's not one of the final three. BT3 got his first victory yep. last night at Beechridge. So congratulations to him and, you know, yep. the whole Southern Maine Motors, who's a right. supporter of our Scott show. Scott and Vicky Mulker and, you know, uh, and they're all the support all that the they give him. All the Wolverines that give him. And uh, another shout-out I want to throw out. Pinkham back in Victory Lane yep. at Beach Ridge. So last night it was it was pretty special. I mean, the, these are you know Bobby Timmons the third's a third generation driver, and Phil Pinkham uh, Jr. is a second generation driver. But I mean, we're starting to see the the overflow of the generations coming through. Talent, right? yeah, talent. So you know that's great that that's happened. I wish I was there to witness it on both sides because right. you know I grew up when Phil Pinkham built his first race car. I held the pipes. Didn't know anything. He was welding it. I was holding pipes. Right. You know, so it would have been nice to see his kid, you know, get that first win. And, you know, it had to be pretty emotional for, for Phil and the whole family, you know. Yeah, they, they, they took long, the golf cart ride out to the front a stretch. A long history down there at Beach Ridge. Yeah. You know, with, you know, the kid's uncle Richard, obviously David. Peter was a judge for the longest time. You know, and, and the aunts go, the cousins, and, you know. You know, and, you know, you mentioned the Pinkham family, but his mother is Leonard Lucy, his sister who used to race yeah. so I mean he's got it from They're both racing, sides racing right bloodline. racing bloodline so. so congratulations to him and a little shout out to a buddy of yours that yeah John Barry he uh, he's been around Beechridge forever and he's had some recent medical issues and stuff like that and the lot you know the last few years he's been hanging around with Dave Oliver and those guys and he, you know, he goes down to the pits, but he's been there forever. And big supporter of mainly motorsports. Yeah, he's so. he's uh, he's always up to God in the Levitt shop too. God calls him the the mayor of Keys of Falls. The mayor so. of Keys of Falls. So hopefully you stop feeling better, John, and enjoy this week's episode. We're bringing you the 250 right from here, so you weren't able to make it, but we're going to bring you all the action, or most of the action, of what you need to see. So we're going to take a break. It's getting ready. The heats are going to start. We're going to come back, meet some of the drivers that are going to be in the field that maybe you do expect or they didn't expect. And then later on, all the experts, or well, we all think we're experts, we're gonna give you our take on who's gonna win the 250, and then you're gonna know later who was right, but it don't matter who was right, somebody's going home very, very happy here from Oxford, Maine today. So we're gonna take a break and we'll be back here on Mainly Motorsports. Hi, this is Scott from Scotch Recreation. Six years ago, I went to purchase my family our first camper. I didn't like the way I was treated, and I didn't like the prices, so I opened up Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. We have over 100 new and used travel trailers, fifth wheels, toy haulers, and pop-ups in stock at both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. We take most anything on trade we don't have to feed. We have plenty of no money down financing available to qualified applicants at the lowest rates we've seen in years. See all inventory at scotchrecreation.com. Looking for a great time, great people, and great food? Then visit New England's number one biker destination, Bentley Saloon, owned by legendary supermodified driver Bentley Warren. Bentley's is a biker bar that welcomes everyone. Staying in the area, Bentley's has their own full-service campground right on site. Tuesdays, Bentley's Cruise Night attracts car enthusiasts from all over New England. Located on Route 1 in Arundel, Bentley Saloon guarantees a great time. Check out the fun at BentleySaloon.com and see why Bentley says, who has more fun than us? Pat Man's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Pat Man himself, just letting you know that Pat Man's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Northern Race Tire, dealer for Sunoco Race Fuels, distributed by New England Racing Fuel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. All right, qualifying action's over. The only thing we got left is the last chance qualifiers. And like we talked about in the opening segment, these guys that come in with all the hype, it's like the Sports Illustrated curse. You know, you always get bitten. 
Ben Ashline, perfect example, running three wide, was forced four and five wide, probably should have backed out, didn't back out, ended up in a backstretch wall, ended his day and his dream for the 2012 Oxford 250. But there's a lot of great stories still happen here today. Nick Sweet still isn't in, one of the pre-race favorites. But we're gonna go out, we're gonna chat with a, a driver from each heat that for various reasons, and uh, obvious reasons in some of them, it's a big deal to get in the race. Some of them are probably pre-race favorites, others are very surprising to be in. But I'm gonna send it over to Greg, who's caught up with the winner of the first heat, that's gonna be on the pole, and it's a big change from where he was last year. So Greg, let's hear from who you have. So now here I am with the pole sitter, winner of the heat, the first heat, Ricky Rolfe. Ricky, I'm gonna hit you with the hard question right off the bat. How good does this feel after the disappointment you had last year? Uh, this actually feels pretty good. I mean, the boys have worked hard since last year to get, you know, get our name back. That we're not, you know, we're not trying to push the rules. That, you know, we're not cheaters. You know, we, just something that happened. We just either we made a mistake, or the wheel company made a mistake, whatever. But it's all over with. We forget about it, and uh, this is good. It's a different year. Now, what would this mean to RB Performance for you to bring home the 250 win? I think I'd be pretty busy this winter if it, if it happens. Uh, I'm not predicting a win. I'm predicting a pretty good finish. You know, I don't want to get greedy. I, I don't think we got the best car here. I think we got a pretty good, consistent car. And if I can keep the tires under it and not get aggressive and and uh, just ride, ride, ride until it's time to go, about 50 to go, I think we'll have a pretty good shot at it. Well, Ricky, I want to congratulate you on the poll from us at Mainly Motorsports. Wish you good luck. Now back to Steve. See who he's with. All right, thanks, Greg. And uh, caught up with the winner of the second heat. And let me tell you, he put on a clinic, didn't start right at the front, started mid-pack, drove it to the front, wanted to start outside pole, and that's Joey Pole. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name, but you got a good car here today, Joey. Yeah, you know, we really do. We've struggled the last couple of 250s we've had here. We've run good in the act races, but uh, we tested here a couple weeks back and, and really got the car to where it was comfortable for me. You know, we've always been kind of on the edge of being, you know, kind of floating feeling on the track, but I feel like we're really in the track today and uh, hoping to just have a good run and, and have a shot. That's all you can ask for. Well, you touched a little bit on what I wanted to talk about was the last two or three years, you've come in as one of those hyped guys, one of the favorites, one of the guys that can could be standing in victory lane at the end of the day. This year, there's a couple other guys from Maine. One of them that's going to be a future brother-in-law of yours has gotten all that hype. He's backed it up. Ashline wasn't able to. You came in under the radar. Do you think that was a helper to you and your team to uh, just kind of roll in the gate, unload, do your thing without all the added pressure of being one of the favorites? Oh, definitely. I really think so. Uh, you know, it's a lot to come in here when you're, you're picked to win the race. It's uh, You put a lot more pressure on you as a driver and your whole team. They put pressure on themselves. But... Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I like flying in under the radar and, and having a good run, and, and then people can be like, oh, well, you know, he did pretty good. But, uh, you know, you hit on it. Austin is, uh, he's running really good today, so there's a lot of good cars starting up front. You got Jeff Taylor, uh, Ricky Rolfe, Eddie McDonald, and Austin. They're all, I mean, I think the top 10 could have a shot of winning this race. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, and you're considered one of the threats now when they drop the green here in a little bit. So that's Joey Pohl going off second. Good luck today, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. I'm here with Travis Stearns, and Travis entered today's event as the current point leader at Oxford Plain Speedway. And Travis, you entered with a Oxford Plain Speedway provisional. What made you race so hard in the third heat, um, you know, to gain the position when you could have just rode around and had the position anyway? Uh, just really trying to save laps on the tires. Uh, I really feel the guys, they have to run all day long and really have a hard time in the race keeping up. We just, we knew if we thought we had a chance to go for it. If we didn't, we were going to conserve. But I thought we could do it, so we went for it. All right, and Travis, as the current points leader at Oxford Plain Speedway, you were not really considered a huge threat coming into today's event. No, no offense or anything, but um, you know, there's some hype around some other drivers. Did that take a little pressure off of you? It did. I really, I didn't want to be, and I really didn't get much attention at all. So it kind of worked out because I don't, I'm not a huge fan of it, but. I was a little surprised, but that's all right. It kind of helps us. I'd rather be the underdog for sure. And uh, last question, um, who prepares your cars and builds your chassis and all that uh, good stuff? Crazy horse racing right here in South Paris. Uh, I mentioned Judy and Mickey Green. I actually leave my car right there this year. Um, it's a brand new one. 
it's been lights out since we had it. I'm really, really impressed and hopefully it keeps going. Awesome. Well, congratulations on uh, officially qualifying for the TD Bank 250 and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Back to you, Greg. Well, I'm here with Timmy Brackett, who just qualified by winning his heat, and now he's starting fourth. What's it feel like to get in the 250, you know, every time you've done it, but you got, you've been trying to win this race forever. What's it mean to you? Well, I don't know how good we really are, but, uh, you yeah, know, we were pretty good in the heat. Cousin Kenny got me a good good spot to, to start the race from, and um, I, I think we're as good as anybody. I mean, there might be a couple faster, a lap or two here, but we're pretty consistent, and it's a long time. We'll see what happens. Yeah, 250 laps is a long time. Now, not only today you got yourself, you got, you, you got TJ and you got Vanna trying to make it, and TJ's qualified in now, and I believe Vanna's going to a last chance race, or... Yeah, Has she already run at this point? She, she, she run it. She didn't make it. So, but you got two of you out of the three you're in. Right. You know, that right there explains the highs and lows of this race. You know, what's it mean for you to be racing with your kids and experience the highs and lows of this race? Yeah, I mean, I feel bad that Vanna didn't get it in, but I mean, it's this is a tough, tough race, and if you don't have everything going your way, it isn't. Uh, you know, getting in the race, it, it just makes for a long, long day, and you. You know, you're really excited to qualifying, and then you look and your kid didn't, and you, you know, maybe next year. Maybe next year. Well, that's Timmy Brackett rolling off fourth. Now we're passing it back over to Steve, see who he's with. All right, Deej, you're here to do something your dad never could. You probably get tired of hearing about your dad never doing it, and your dad's probably tired of him never doing it. He's been close. This team has been close. I mean, what are your chances today? Um, you know, I think they're as good as anybody's. We've we've struggled all day, but uh, you know, we took a pretty good swing at it here, and you know, gonna go into it as optimistic as can be, and you know, just hope that we got it. Well, getting in after the heat obviously made things a little bit easier and a little more stress-free the rest of the afternoon. You know, what do you think is going to be once the temperatures cool off and the track conditions change? I think it'll definitely help us out a little bit. Unfortunately, I think it's going to help everybody a little bit, but. Uh, you know, the track's just really greasy right now, and it's making it pretty tough. We got fortunate to get a good draw and get it, get the uh, qualifying out of the way in the heat and just relax and make changes on it for the rest of the day. All right, Deej. Well, uh, you're in. The race is going to be starting shortly. Good luck, man. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Steve. I'm here with Sean Martin. Sean, you're, currently, you're certainly not a rookie to Officer Plain Speedway. You've won the Strictly Stock Championship, a couple ACT races, one being on the Fame 250 weekend in 2006. What would it mean to you to win the TD Bank 250? Uh, this is uh, every racer's dream in New England here to come here and win this race. This is, there's so much prestige, there's so much money in the line. Uh, this is what it's all about. We set up our entire season for this race. This is, this is, this is our big goal here. All right, Sean, you'll be rolling off in the 24th starting position tonight. What is your strategy coming from the middle slash back of the pack? I'll tell you that we were hoping for a little bit better starting position than that. Um, the car actually changed on us right for the for the heat. The car tightened up on us, and we just couldn't make the, the headway that we were hoping for. Um, but we're, we're thankful we're in. Um, we got to get on throttle early, and we gotta we got to be smart. But, we, you know, the biggest thing is we can't get lapped early. We have a... We have some pitch strategy in mind right now, and the, but the biggest thing is we can't get lapped early, and we, uh, you know, hopefully we made some adjustments. Hopefully this car will come around. And lastly, uh, who helped build your car and your chassis and all that good stuff? Uh, Jeff Taylor actually built this car. Um, he's been a big help this season, and you know he's a big reason why we're running so well over here. And big thanks to, to Jeff and Sean and everybody up to distance racing. All right. Well, congratulations on making your way in, and good luck tonight. Now let's go racing, guys, for the 39th annual TD Bank 250. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems, even collision avoidance systems, not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Orem, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. You're watching Mainly Motorsports.
brought to you by Clark's Car Crushing, located in Hollowell, providing guaranteed honest weights with top dollar being paid. Gary Hotels, located in Brunswick, Freeport, Waterville, and Augusta, the official hotel of Mainly Motorsports. Hey, I'm Kyle Busch, and when I'm in Maine, I watch Mainly Motorsports. Hi, this is Travis Barrett from GWC Motorsports Marketing. Here to tell you that I think Austin Terrio is the pick to win the TD Bank 250 tonight. I think he's ready for his breakout performance. He's got a brand new car. He's been rock solid all weekend, and uh, I think it's his time to shine and uh, bring this trophy uh, back to Maine. So uh, back to you guys. Uh. Hi, I'm Mike Twist from Speed51.com. I think this year it's going to come down to a couple of veterans who are used to building really fast race cars. Jeff Taylor and my pick, Ricky Rolfe in the 51. I think at the end of 250 laps, his consistent car is going to be the one that wins. That's a great pick, Mike. I'm Amanda Leach, former co-host for Mainly Motorsports, and my pick tonight is Brent Dragon. In main words, he was wicked fast in his heat, and he rolls off ninth today, so hopefully I'll see him in victory lane. Some great picks by some great people. Thanks to them for helping out. Like Twisty said, I think it's going to come down to a chassis builder. My pick for the Oxford 250 for the 39th annual it's going to be his first one, the Hound Dog. All right, everybody else made their picks all towards the front of the field. It's been 18 years since this trophy's gone back to Canada. Went 18 years ago, $52,000 with David Whitlock. But this year it's going back with the number 91, the orange car, with my buddy Patrick LaPearl. And Patrick, do we got a shot? Oui, c'est sûr. Regarde, l'auto va tellement bien. Euh, Dans pratique, un matin, on était super vite. Euh, c'est sûr que là, avec le soleil, euh, l'auto euh, venait à l'eau un petit peu. Mais là, on a fait les bonnes ajustements, puis euh, on s'en va en avant. You heard it there from Patrick. If you understood it, you're better off than I am. Now, I'm going to Victory Lane, baby. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Scotch Recreation is offering end of the season pricing now. Save thousands on our entire inventory. Travel trailers, fifth wheels, toy haulers, truck campers, even pop-ups. Save up to $20,000. Most dealers wait till the end of the season to lower prices. We do it now. Over 100 units in stock at two locations. Get end of season pricing, now is the time to buy. Scotts Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. to you by Award Champs, rewarding your champions, the official supplier of Mainly Motorsports, Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership, Route 1 Saco. Bentley's Saloon. Bentley's is a biker bar that welcomes everyone. Check out the fun at BentleySaloon.com. And see why Bentley says, who has more fun than us? We do. Sitting here with a third place finisher, second year in a row. I mean, I mean, it's good. Finishing third in the TD Bank, the 250 is good, but I know you're disappointed. Yeah, um, last year, I mean, we were ecstatic finishing third. Uh, we went into the weekend hoping to qualify and just, you know, stay on the lead lap and that. But, uh, uh, you know, coming into the race this year, we knew we had a good car. And we, had, you know, the team was capable of running up front, and uh, you know, if everything worked out, we were we were hoping to run up front. And, and you know, for the most part, everything. Everything went as planned, but uh, the way that 
the way there was a lack of cautions in the race kind of didn't play very well for what for the strategy we had planned. Yeah, no, let's talk about your strategy. Your race had three segments. I know it wasn't the plan, but you pitted on 135 with everybody else. You drove up methodically up into the top yep. three. You came out back a ways, you know, race still there. But when the green dropped, you didn't stay there. You went backwards, you know. Uh, you know, and it, what happened? Um, it, you know, it was a calculated move. We knew we were going to have a hard time running with the guys that took four tires because we only took two. Um, and we knew at that point that the strategy wasn't going to work because of the lack of cautions. You know, we had a long green flag run, and we thought we were going to have another long green flag run. And luckily, um, we were able to maintain enough track position and, and stay on the lead lap. And a caution came out at lap 208, and we came in and took our other set of rights that we had, and uh, and. And then we had what, 40 laps to drive up to the front, and yeah. we kind of ran out of time. But I guess if we would have had another 10 laps, we, we would have been right up there. Yeah, if it had been the 260 or 270, yeah. you know. But, but, but it, it wasn't, and you just, I mean, you got to take it. I take mean, it. yeah, you rolled the car in the trailer, yeah. you take it on yeah. hardware, you a pretty good purses check, mm -hmm. you know, just not what you expected. You came in as, you know, and, and you don't do it yourself. You don't walk through the gate and say, I'm here, I think I'm going to win this thing. The media. The fans, they put the pressure on you. It's not that it's pressure, but, you know, and, and, and it's, you deserve it and you, you work for it because you've been fast all year in the ACT. You've been fast here on a, on a weekly basis. So you can't be disappointed, but in the end, knowing how much faster you were than Jeff and Joey. I mean, do you know how much faster you were than them? Uh, visually, visually, they were, they were telling me my lap times. It was quite a bit, but, uh, I mean, we... Like like you, like you said, we we came into the weekend with a lot of confidence. We, you know, we weren't overly confident, but, but we knew that we had been running good, and uh, that we were capable of running up front. We had a good car, and everybody was, you know, the team was doing what they needed to do, and it just didn't work out. But you can't complain with a third place finish. Uh, no, exactly. And obviously, you know, not everybody knows, but Joey's going to be a welcome addition to the family as he's engaged to his sister Brittany. So. It's bittersweet. I mean, you're happy for him, but yeah, you yeah. like to have the roles reversed, you know? I, I told him I'm, I'm hoping uh, some of the purse goes towards the wedding. Some <laughs> of the purse goes towards the yeah. wedding. So, But congratulations yeah, again, Austin. You. You, you got a long career ahead of you. You got many more chances at this race. I know, you know, we're going to talk to the next guy coming up that's been trying for years to win it. So you could be in his shoes and finish runner-up. But great job, and that's third-place finisher, finisher Austin Terrio once again put on a show here at the TD Bank 250. Well, here we are with the runner-up finisher, the bridesmaid once again. Will you ever be the bride? Uh, today, it doesn't look like it. Uh, maybe someday, if you don't give up. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and I mean, you had a car all day long, you yeah. know? Just like last year's race, you had a car all day long. But just somebody, I don't know better. if he was a little bit better than you, but when he needed to be sure. to get to the front, Joey was better than you. Oh, absolutely. You don't lead as many laps as he did without being better. So, I mean, we did what we could do. I would say we've only raced this as the second race of the year. So we probably exceeded what we should have done, you know, because we don't know our car. We ain't raced it enough. Yep. So, you know, we beat him out of the pits the first time we pitted in the year. So we had a great day. He just didn't win. You know? Yeah. Now, we talk about the car. A lot of people that, you know, might be new to racing and new to this sport up here, you know, you were the king here for years. I mean, the oh, king cool. left, you were the new king yeah. with, when they had the pro stock super late models. You came close on occasions there. How went, who you, you deal with and build chassis sure. for, they made a big change back in the early 2000s. You jumped on board, you worked, you struggled. Oh, yeah, sure okay? did. You got that program back to winning races, and then you did the same with your late model program. Yeah, yeah I mean, somebody has to be first, you know. So we take it upon ourselves to do that, and if we get it figured out, then we can obviously sell it. So, you know, that comes with a little bit of risk reward because sometimes it's not so good, and sometimes you get it quick. So, well, and we've seen chassis builders come and go, sure. and part of the reason why they go is because they don't take care of their customers. Yeah, you have done that. You always do that, and like you said, you'll sacrifice on oh. your end. To get rewarded on the other end, and, and they and they see that, you know. Sure. And uh, 
and let's talk about one of your, he's an employee, and he runs one of your cars, and that's Ben Ashline. I right. mean, yeah, Ben worked for us for a little over a year, and today didn't go very well for him, but he's had, he's won an act race, he won a Saturday night race, you know, it's picked him up a lot, but you catch, you catch somebody like a Ben, a Joy, you, 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 you got to catch them at the right time too, you know, because they've already gone through the learning curve. So if you get your stuff right when they're right, it just gels. And 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 we all have that in the chassis business. I mean, you catch the right person at the right time, and it, it makes us all look really good. Now, you are probably, you know, a crew chief in the seat. I mean, probably more. No, I mean, we talked about it before we went on air. You're older than first and third added sure. together. You know, so you have all the knowledge, whereas they might not know what would have fixed it and made you better. But where do you think Joey was better than you? I'd say he, I never see him wiggle off the corner and I knew I was some. So he was better on the gas. Um, but all these kids, you know, that grow up in go-karts and sprints and micro sprints and midgets or whatever, they've learned how to run their race car looser than I can. I grew up in the day, especially here, four barrels, slippery racetrack. I need my car as tight as I can get it, and usually it's not tight enough. But they can run it loose, and that's probably one of their advantages over a fellow like myself. You know? Yeah, but you got to be happy, runner-up. Yeah. Your chassis is the winner. Yeah. So, I mean, is it one of those deals where we're going to win on Sunday and sell on Monday? Or? Well, I mean, it doesn't hurt any, I'm sure. I mean, I don't suspect the phone is going to ring off the hook with with orders because it doesn't this time of year. Yeah. But obviously, it's a feather in our cap. And, you know, we went with Mike and, and some other people through the years. And it's it's just good to get back. Somebody get back in the winning circles. We've had customers ourselves with good cars that could have, would have, should have, and didn't. So today it all went our way and the customer won and we had a good day so well i mean my hat's off to distance racing products yeah. and uh you've worked hard to make it what it is today and uh today here at the td bank 250 it showed yeah. with the win for joey pole and then a runner-up finish for you jeff so yeah. congratulations oh, to all you. of us at mainly motorsports thank and you. uh big things ahead oh yeah all right, Logan. there you go. There's your runner-up, Jeff Taylor. The bridesmaid once again, but he's not giving up. He'll be back uh -huh. next year to try again. Clark's Car Crushing has been a family-owned and operated business since 1978. We do everything from crushing cars, handling industrial scraps, to buying the scrap metal right out of the back of your pickup. Copper, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, you name it, we'll buy it. We have roll-off containers of all sizes for industrial accounts. We'll handle the legwork with full drop-off and pickup services. So for a professional job, guaranteed honest weights, and top dollar paid statewide, come see the Clark family in Farmingdale, Maine. Clark's Car Crushing. Don't fix it, scrap it. You're watching Mainly Motorsports. Brought to you by LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. Joey, you just won the TD Bank 250. On the year that you didn't come in, we talked earlier in the show, yep. you didn't come in as that guy that people were talking about. And here you are with a big check, a big trophy, and a big happy crew. Yeah, I mean... It it really was. I mean, we've come into this race, this you know, as a favorite before, and you know, you just put so much more pressure on yourself. You know, it's human nature. It's not that you try to. It's just when everybody, when everybody picks you, you kind of just, you know, you got to try to put all that pressure on your shoulders. And, and we didn't have that. We didn't have to carry that on our shoulders into the race this weekend. And we just focused so hard on, on making our car drive in the track and, and not get that wheel spin off the corner. And uh, you know, we didn't do a lot of practicing yesterday. We just made sure we kept up with the track. And uh, everything just just played out perfectly tonight. And it's funny, we the last segment we had Jeff Taylor on, finishing runner-up, and I asked him, where was Joey better than you? And you just said it. You didn't have no wheel spin up off the corner, and he wiggled. You know, and that was just enough that he wasn't able to ever get to you. Yeah, you know, that's it's huge here. I mean, this track's basically a circle. I mean, you're always you always got input into the wheel. So if your rear end's kicking out <clears throat> kicking out on you. You know, you're, you're losing time, you're losing a lot of speed. So, I mean, early on in the race, I, I tried to lay down a, a fast a fast pace and lap as many cars as I could to try to take some guys out of out of the race. 
and uh, I, I went a little too hard and burnt the stuff up and I really started fading there at the end. So we put those new tires on there and we, we lost some spots on pit road, but uh, I was just, the car was perfect after that, that pit stop. And I just kept trying to talk to myself in my head, just, you know, go easy on the throttle, pretend it was a, an, an, an eggshell, which is what you got to do here. Because if you just, if you spin the tires at all, you're just taking away the good rubber off of it. And uh, that was my main goal, not to spin the tires. Yeah, and then you did. You faded about lap 115 One, to 120. Yep. Kashi came out in a timely manner. You pitted, and then you came out in 12th, and I'm like, wow. I don't know if he's, you know, now we'll find out how good that car is. Yeah. And you didn't take long to blast up through there and get that lead back. I mean, this was, this is one of those years where there was a dominating performance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it still hasn't really sunk in yet. I mean, this, I've been coming to this race, you know, this, this is as big as it gets for short track racing. I mean, this, this is, the country knows about this race. I mean, Kyle Busch won this race last year. It's, uh, it's not an easy race to win by any means. And, uh, you know, we've, we've come close in 08, but we've struggled here the past couple of years. And, you know, we really focused hard. We've had a good year so far this year. Haven't quite been able to win yet, but, you know, it all changed tonight. And it couldn't have been a bigger race to change. Well, there's that little town in Hudson, New Hampshire, that's got the Dion family. Yep. Dave Dion, three-time winner. Now they can add your name to a winner of this race. That it has, Like you said, it has a huge history. Yeah. I mean, think of the guys that have won it. You know, Dion three times, Nation, Rowe, Eddie McDonald, Junior Hanley, Butch Lindley. But let's think of the guys like Jeff, yeah. Dale Shaw, Robbie Crouch that never won this race. It's it's amazing to think that. You know, that's what I've been saying a lot tonight is just people try their whole life just to just to make this race. And then, you know, guys like Jeff who, who you know, a nine time champion here who have tried to, to win this race for you know, he won't like to hear it, but probably before I was born. Yeah. And uh, it's just I couldn't. I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, we just. Our, our, no one can do this without a good team, and, and our team just, just put, never stopped working and, and put a great car underneath me. And you know, I just did all I could as a driver to to win this, and, and you know, it really hasn't sunk in yet. I, it, I, and it it will eventually. Yeah. And, and you know, and when you wake up tomorrow, you'll pinch yourself. <laughs> but talk about your team. I mean, your parents have put so much. They have into yep. you. You know, young Joey. You're the racer. They've given you the opportunities on the K&N side, put you into some rides, you know. We thought things were going to work out there. They kept, I mean, they've just given you so much. So how big of a deal is it to give this back to them? It's huge. You know, I, I'm, my whole life I'll never be able to repay them for, for what they've done for me, you know, just as, a, as growing up as a kid and just having the opportunity to drive these cars, you know. And, you know, we've tried. We've, we've tried to take that next step and go into the K&N series, but... You know, anyone that is involved in racing knows that it, it takes a lot of sponsorship. I mean, it's not, the best driver doesn't necessarily make it to the top. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just nature of the sport. And, you know, we've tried. We've had a few good efforts with the K&N car. But, uh, you know, it's, it gets expensive. And, uh, you know, we do what we can do. And, and, you know, we put it forth 100% on these act cars. And we run a few pass races every now and then. But, uh, you know, we, we're just fire, firing on all eight cylinders right now. We've got the best team we've ever had, you know, from Nick, our tire guy, to, to Jake, you know, pretty much our right-hand man, to Doug. I mean, it's just, I couldn't, you know, life is good right now. I yeah, life is really good. I just engaged, got engaged to yeah. Austin's sister. So yeah. how bittersweet is it for the Terrio family, you know, to have the future son-in-law in first and Austin, bittersweet, third place finish. You know, he had a good car. and. You know, I'm sure you know it's a good thing maybe it wasn't another 20 oh, laps. That's a very good thing. You, well, I don't because I, I turned my mirror so I couldn't see anything behind me there those last yeah. 10 laps. No, and, and what goes through a young man's heart and head when you know you're 10 laps away from the biggest thing in New England other than winning a race at Loudoun? But you know what? Other than winning the cup race at Loudoun, I don't think there is anything bigger than winning this race. <laughs> there really isn't. I mean, ask Kyle Busch that. He'll tell you first off that he this is huge. I mean, he wanted to win this thing bad, but... All that was going through my head was 10, 9, 8, seven. I was just counting it down in my head, but uh, still was trying to tell myself, you know, don't spin the tires, don't spin the tires. And like I said, I wasn't, I, I turned my mirror so I couldn't see Jeff. I knew, I knew he was there and I knew early on that he was probably saving his stuff, but uh, I just tried to focus on hitting my marks perfectly every time and then I saw the checkered flags and it's just, uh, I couldn't, I still can't believe it. Obviously, some sponsors, you know, yeah. I mean, that really make this possible. Definitely. I mean, 
obviously Poles Automotive, you know, our, our family business, but uh, nhprecision.com, um, Headman Hustler Headers, um, definitely Ford for, for, for being there for us, uh, rivetislet.com, Edison Manufacturing, Dave Co. Development. I mean, sponsors are, are what keeps us going, you know, it's, it's, it's so important in this sport and it's, uh, we're very lucky to have some good sponsors. Yeah, so from all of us at Mainly Motorsports, we want to congratulate you, Joey. Thank you. And you're going to wake up tomorrow <laughs> calling yourself the TD Bank 250 winner. And I'm telling you, it's one of the greatest feelings you're going to experience until you see Brittany coming down the aisle. All right? Well, that's congratulations, true. man. Thank you. And that's your winner for the 39th annual TD Bank 250, young Joey Pohl right out of Hudson, New Hampshire. And I'm sure down in Florida, the man Dave Dion is like... <laughs> Bittersweet, you know, now it's not only me and Hudson, but now it's put Hudson back on the map. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back to wrap up this edition of Mainly Motorsports right here from the TD Bank 250. Where's the best place to get a new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram? Southern Maine Motors. Hi, my name is Danielle, customer care service specialist at Southern Maine Motors. We are a local family-owned business. Our separation point in this busy market is our commitment to you. Satisfaction is not enough. Our goal is for you to become a store promoter because your kind words are stronger than over 100 TV commercials. This Jeep Patriot Sport is only $13,225 or this Jeep Compass Sport for only $17,567. No other dealer is working as hard to be number one as Southern Maine Motors. You're watching Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Gary Hotels, located in Brunswick, Freeport, Waterville, and Augusta, the official hotel of Mainly Motorsports. Northern Race Tire, dealer for Sunoco Race Fuels, distributed by New England Racing Fuel. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check of money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports. 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. Well, as we wrap up another edition of Mainly Motorsports right here from the TD Bank 250, I mean, I love this. I mean, it makes for a hectic day. And first off, i got to thank you. I thank Amanda for coming up. Obviously, Louie running around like a nut. Nate, you know what I mean? A lot of people make this right. possible. And then anybody that's ever dealt with me knows how crazy I make stuff because I'm not really picture perfect right but I mean we got it done and I think people are going to enjoy this episode you know and it was a great great weekend up here and yeah. capitulated by a great day and three great individuals in on the podium yeah I mean we we ended up having one of the main young gun finalists finish third yeah then we had one of the main veterans finish second and then we had a young gun out of New Hampshire Hudson, Joey New Pohl Hampshire's. Joey dominate Pol the Asik race or something like that right but yeah. I, I mean but everybody knows him as Joey Pole and uh, listen my sister has had a nickname for him her nickname was Jelly Roll Jelly Roll right here's my nickname for him Money Roll oh yeah what do you get over 40 45 5 I think 45,500 wow. what a great day for a young man also earning an act invitational to Loudon yep. you know a spot in that I mean just what a great month the kid has had the yeah. engagement everything and then to come up here and we did it we interviewed him earlier yeah. like i said and my take on his interview was he's under the radar every other year he comes he's that guy they talked about we talked about it earlier the sports illustrated James. he ain't gonna be under the radar next year no he's already in the show you right. know which you know after the heat i mean he put on a dominating performance in his heat yeah and he backed it up in the feature and when i knew that the cat had a car was when he pitted and came out 12 and, and fired it back up to with the everybody on new rubber yeah you know so, congratulations to him. Congratulations to all the winners this weekend up here at, yeah. at Oxford. And uh, another great time. And, you know, another point to make about the top three finishes of the TD Bank 250 this year. That blue oval camp is going to be happy. The Ford camp. They, they were all Ford uh, cars. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. So uh, And especially, gonna, you know, you brought it up earlier about it being bittersweet for Dave Dion. Dave Dion's had a lot to do with that that Ford uh, crate motor deal coming into the ACT series. Yep. And and for Joey Pohl to come back with uh, come in and win the 250 with a Ford, which has always been Dion's deal, you know. And yeah, you know, and it was just a great day, you know. Bad day for Ben Ashline. I mean, you know. Bad day for Ben Ashline. Bad day for Nick Sweet. Yeah, how about Nick Sweet? Sad he interviewed him last year as a runner-up. Nick Sweet said the other night at, at, at Thunder Road when he won. 
I'm going to Maine and, and taking the money. He well, went you, to Maine, and he was sitting in the same let, spot. We listen, were. I'm not I'm not dissing Nick Sweet because Nick Sweet is a hell of a race car driver, but you got to get in the show if you got to take the money. He was sitting in the same spot we were in the sands. You know what I mean? So uh, cost him a lot more for and, his seat. And, but it's it's you know it stinks for anybody. You know, and how about the little guys? The little guys in the show. Shout out to Dave Farrington. Man. I, I went up and shook Dave Farrington's hand before the start of the race when they were in lined up in the pits. And I said, good luck, Dave, because I think you really got a good car. And he goes, you know, some people have told me that. And, you know, thank you. I really appreciate you coming up. And, you know, I patted him on the back and said, it's a long race. And pulls off a top ten finish, you know. Yep. No. Travis Stearns. Travis Stearns, who knows where he would end up. He got trapped behind uh, DJ Shaw, who was a After lap guy, yeah, having a bad he, day. He came on. I don't think he was as good the second half as he was the first. I don't know. He got dragged back, way back. And Austin's pit strategy. But next year, there's always the 40th annual. And we'll be back. They'll be back. Maybe we'll put... We ought to come up here with Lou in a late model, right? Lou just won a special award down at Beach Ridge, right? <laughs> they, they passed out a thing, and Lou won the driver... I'm kind of disappointed because I like to do the mainlies. I had a mainly for that award, and Lou's already won. Now, what can you, you know what I mean? The driver you most not like to race with. So we're going to get Lou a special award because all the little wildcatters down there just don't want to race with Lou. You know? I, I don't I don't usually disagree with a lot of things that they do at Beechridge, but, you know, I yeah. think that's kind of. Yeah, no, letting those guys, you know. that That's, yeah, that's. Whatever. Yeah. So the guys that wrote their own number down, my hat's off to you. So. Here's my hat off to Lou. Lou started, Lou's penalty is to start last in the heat in the feature for, until further notice. Started last in his heat, finished second. Yeah, so I want to, you know, hopefully Lou he gets a message. Not that he's doing anything wrong, but obviously he must be because he's getting slapped. So, But Lou's a great guy. I mean, he's up here all weekend with us, and he's helped. A lot of them guys that are calling him out and throwing him under the bus, Lou's probably lent him pots took pots off whatever to give them and, and been the first one to help them when they've right, been torn yep. up after a heat or uh, uh, so it'll all get straightened out and they'll all get back on the same page so another thing that's coming up shortly and we did last year and we're going to do it again yep. is the Southern Maine Garden Tractor Club puts that Make-A-Wish Foundation on brings some Make-A-Wish kids in gives them the opportunity it's going to be a great time it's coming up August 5th you can go to their website southernmaingardentractorclub.com yep. for more information you can see the poster right online and I want to one more shout out about Beatridge. Last year at the show, at the 250, met a young lady named Amy Keel, right? Nice young lady. She's yep. a nurse, wants to race. Somebody put a car together for her. She's down there racing. A couple weeks ago, grandfather's having some health issues, you know. She went to Bangor, told her grandfather, you know, I'm, I, I'm going down there. Nick Sweet was coming to Maine to take the money home. Nick Sweet didn't back it up. Amy Keel told Gramps she was coming to Maine, to uh, coming to Beatridge to go get the flag and trophy and bring it back and show him. Well, she did a couple weeks ago, won her first race on Thursday Thunder, so pretty neat, so excited. So you see a picture of Amy on screen now, so uh, it's neat, you know. Yeah. Gramps is having some yep. hot troubles, and uh, she brings him back, puts a smile on his face, so uh, congrats. I mean, that's a feel-good story, but Joey Pohl oh, that's kicking a... everybody's ass in the 250 this today. Oh, yeah. I'm that's, sorry. That... That's a big feel-good story. Right. So for Greg, Nate, Louie, Amanda, everybody that pitched in and helped, my wife, all our friends that showed up, I appreciate you guys all tuning in. Hope you like this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports. And we'll see you next time right here on Mainly Motorsports.